If you are a Minnesota Vikings fan, you might not like what I'm about to say about your team once we get into the breakdown of this team, so I'm sorry in advance. But before we do get into the breakdown of this team, I do have a big announcement that I will let you guys know at the end of this little intro thing, but the last few videos have easily hit the like goals. Like, we hit 25 likes in the first day on the last one. Shit's crazy. So let's up it to 30. I'm officially gonna up the like goal on all my videos to 30 now. And a few hundred people watch each one of my videos at this point, so be sure to drop a sub. Let's see if we can get to 230 subs by the end of the first day of this video being out. If we can hit that, I will be very thankful. And turn on notifications for my channel as well, because it seems like a lot of my viewers watch my videos once and then never get recommended them again, so turn on notifications. And huge, huge shout out to Levi and Elias Games for the suggestion of this video. They have been commenting like crazy on my videos, so I appreciate that a ton. Go drop them a sub. They really deserve it. Their link will be in the description. And if you want a shout out just like that one, be sure to let me know down below what team I should rebuild next. And if I pick your comment, if it wins the vote, you will get a shout out just like that one. And I'll drop you a sub and all that good stuff. But it is time for the big announcement of today's video. I am going to be creating a Twitch and I'm going to be streaming a good amount of the rebuilds I do live on there so you guys can be a part of it. So if you want to be one of the first followers of that, I just created it. The link to that will be in the description. I appreciate you a ton if you follow me over there, but long intro out of the way. Grab a drink, grab a snack, grab whatever you want, grab your anime body pillows. Let's get into the rebuild, and as always, thank you so much for watching. In my opinion, the Minnesota Vikings had the second worst draft in the NFL. However, I'm still higher on this team than most people. Hello everyone, it is Brandon the Simp here, and today we're going to be rebuilding the Minnesota Vikings. And personally, I don't think this is going to be a very hard rebuild. This team is set up super well, so I haven't whipped this out in a while. Pause. But here is my criteria for what I think a Super Bowl winning team is. So a Super Bowl winning team in a perfect world based off the last few Super Bowl teams from the last few years has a top 10 quarterback, a true number one wide receiver with two wide receiver two level receivers next to him, and at least solid offensive line, a true number one pass rusher with a solid number two next to him, and either A, a true number one corner with an at least okay group of like three or four other corners behind him, or a very deep group of starting corners like four or five starting level players with a at least good number one. Think of the Cincinnati Bengals last year with Chidobe Awuzie and then like the five different corners they had that could play. This team checks literally almost all of those boxes, or at least they get close in all of them. Kirk Cousins is borderline top 10, not quite there, but he is close. True number one receiver Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen is a great number two, and I think either KJ Osborne, BC Jones, Johnson, Amir Smith-Marzette, one of those players could emerge as like another good wide receiver. A solid offensive line, definitely. And I am a fan of Chris Reed, so I think he will be good. Or Ali Udo or Wyatt Davis, one of these players I think will step up. True number one and solid number two pass rusher, definitely. Health is a concern with these two, but when healthy, I think this is one of the best pass rush duos in the NFL. And I think this cornerback room falls into the category of very deep group with the potential potential for a true number one. I think either Cam Dantzler or Andrew Booth will break out here into like a number one quality receiver or cornerback. You know what I mean? <laughs> My brain is fried, bro. But they even have some complimentary pieces to go along with that. With Dalvin Cook being one of the best running backs in the NFL, Alexander Madison is great. I think Irv Smith will finally break out here. Harrison Smith is still one of the better safeties in the NFL. Cam Bynum and Lewis seen at free safety. One of those two will probably break out. We could see a Jordan Hicks resurgence. Eric Kendricks is one of the best linebackers in the NFL, even though he had a down year last year. Harrison Phillips was a sneaky good signing from Buffalo. Dalvin Tomlinson is an underrated defensive tackle. I really think this team has a chance to do some damage. It would take a few breakouts, but I think this team could be a genuinely solid playoff team. But today, my goal is 
is going to be to make this team even better. So let's do that, and I'll see you guys at the midseason point of year number one. All right, at the midseason point of year number one, we are sitting at three and three, and that's honestly not too bad. Something I'm curious about is how is Kirk Cousins doing? Because I don't really know how he performs. Oh, he's doing really well. 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns, only one pick. Like I was saying, I don't really know how Kirk does in this game. And just a little spoiler, if he doesn't do well, it's going to be a Kellen Mond moment. That's all I'm saying. But, um, which I did, I did decide to give him star because he is a player that has a ton of upside. We don't have a very good offense. We're 28th. Well, that's probably because we haven't, or we have had a bye week. So we're behind a little bit, I guess, on some teams. I don't know. But we have some upgrades here. Let's see who this is. Just some depth. Well, Wyatt Davis, I have him starting. So one starter and some depth pieces. And just one thing here, Armin Watts actually got a breakout. He went up to superstar. I don't know if it says all that here. I think he got it in like week four. Was it week four? Yeah, C plus star dev. So that's pretty cool. And Harrison Phillips got one of those breakouts where it upgrades the, uh, you can choose to upgrade run defense or pass, pass rush, I guess. So he got one of those, which was pretty cool. So that's a huge help for our defensive line. That makes it much better. And we have some upgrades here. Let's see who this is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, unfortunately, at the end of year number one, we do finish nine and eight. Super close to a playoff berth, but not quite. Okay, I think I see what the problem was. Kirk Cousins really fell off. Finishing with only 24 touchdowns, seven interceptions. I mean, at the midseason point, he was only at 11, but everything else was better, so I don't know. Yeah, he wasn't amazing this first year. Uh, we'll see about a Kellen Mon moment. Dalvin Cook was very good with 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns. You'll love to see it. Justin Jeff. 1200 yards five touchdowns KJ Osborne even had over a thousand with nine touchdowns and almost a thousand from Adam Thielen with 900 so it looks like our receivers did pretty well Irv Smith a little disappointing but not too bad in terms of blocking uh kind of not great especially Garrett Bradbury letting up five sacks as a center is a lot but this is a younger group a developmental group I'm not gonna blow it up yet we'll see how it does next year and then maybe we'll blow it up Brian Asamoa led the team with 134 tackles that's interesting. And we had a lot of tackles for loss. Jesus, Harrison Phillips led the team with 18. And in terms of sacks, Daniil Hunter with 10 and a half. Zadarius Smith with six and a half. That was a nice group. And in terms of interceptions, we didn't have many. Eric Kendricks with three, Cam Dantzler with two, Andrew Booth and Harrison Hand each with one, but that's that's it. What was that? Seven in total? That's not, uh, that's not ideal. Let's check MVP though. I don't know if we're gonna have, or just yearly awards in general. MVP P goes to Kyler Murray, who just got a huge contract, in my opinion, way overpaid, but eventually that'll probably be worth it, assuming he keeps developing. I always forget what team we're doing. What team are we doing? We're doing the Vikings. Unfortunately, no Vikings up here. I'm very professional, I swear. Kyler Murray wins Offensive Player of the Year. No Vikings. That's a weird group. So up here, it's normal. It's some good players. Then you get to Jameis Winston, Justin Fields, Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts. That's, that's something. And Dak Prescott. Scott on the 5 and 12 Cowboys. Huh. Okay. Defensive player of the year, of course, goes to Aaron Donald. Nothing too incredibly out of the ordinary there. Daniil Hunter does come in at number eight. I almost missed that. Offensive rookie of the year goes to not an actual rookie here. Goes to Justin Fields. The only actual rookie up here was Drake London coming in at number seven. Do I have the right? Well, obviously I do if he's on here, but I'm questioning my rosters real quick. Micah Parsons, not an actual rookie anymore, wins defensive rookie of the year. Aiden Hutchinson technically wins it. Brian Asamoah comes in at number nine. I did start him as our sub linebacker, so he did pretty well. And in the Super Bowl, the Los An- no, not Los Angeles, Las Vegas Raiders take down the New Orleans Saints. Those are some loud fans. That was probably a loud game. The Raiders win 28 to 21 over the Saints. That is definitely a new one. I don't really think I've seen either of those teams even even in the Super Bowl. So that's, I like the variation, but also it kind of isn't realistic. I don't know. And in terms of re-signings here, I'm going to re-sign some depth players. Not super exciting, but you know, just so we don't have to worry about these positions later. Okay, he rejects us. Go fuck yourself. Oh, and 
actually kind of big news. I've started working on the uh, contracts in my rosters, at least with the contracts that are going to be expiring at the end of the year. So we're going to start seeing more of those players in free agency here. But there are just a lot of positions. There are just a lot of players. So it's taking me a while to do that. But if you want to download these custom rosters, they are PC only, unfortunately. But my gamer tag is Brandon823021. They're called an updated 22 or something like that. They should be one of the more recent ones up there, I guess, because I update them quite a bit. Has a few hundred downloads, I think, so that's interesting. They're not fully complete, but I think they're decent for what they are. But in free agency, what do we want to do here? Nothing. The answer is nothing. I'm not going to be doing anything here in free agency. The only two moves I'm going to make is we're going to bring in the legend Matt Gay, obviously, because I do that in every rebuild, and it's 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 a funny name, you know, he has Matt, he has Gay as his last name. It's real funny stuff. Comedy gold. And we're gonna bring in Jack Fox to be our, our punter. I love when foxes jack me. Foxes like, uh, hot girls. I don't think I've ever used the word fo- I don't- I, Dude, I'm trying to- I'm trying to make a joke here. I- I tried my best. We're gonna bring in the funny kicker and punter that are actually good players. And we do get the two funny special teamers. Great. Did the Vikings pick up Garrett Bradbury's fifth year? I would- I would doubt that they did, but let me see. Okay, yeah, they de they declined it. I- I would have done the same here anyways. He isn't that good of a player, even in real life, and he played bad here, so I don't know. He's shown in the past that he can be good. It's just last year he really wasn't. Oh god, and someone told- someone uh, gave me a suggestion last video. Let me- let me find it. Okay, shout out William Petty. They told me if you're doing focus players- pause, that's- Poor phrasing. But if you're picking focus players, let's go Mark Mann, Lewis Caldwell, and let's see, let's go uh, D'Angelo Brown, or no, let's go Matt Whitworth. So apparently, this is weird because I kind of thought of this. I didn't know for sure if it would do it, but apparently if you add them as favorites, it'll scout them. Maybe I had to do it before. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if it works though. I hope so. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm holding you accountable, William Petty. All right, so in the draft, the Bills have the number one pick. That's, I think I've seen that before. I don't know why they're so bad in this game so often, but that's, that's EA for you. There goes Lewis Caldwell, so maybe I won't be able to check if that worked. I probably should have checked before. Um, it looks like that one worked, Matt Whitworth. So as far as I know, it worked. If I, if I were smart, I would have done it before, but unfortunately, I'm a dumbass. We are going to go with Matt Whitworth here. This dude looks really good. He is only 5'10", short king. Well, that's not that short, but still. 21 years old, out of Florida State. B catching, B man, B press. Ran a 4-3-8 at the combine, which was second for corners, but his 4-3-8 at his pro day was only fifth, so that's interesting. Only C play rack, B tackle. Looks like a good player, let's take him. And he has normal dev. Okay, well, either way, he looks like a decent player. I would guess like a 73 overall, if if I had to guess. I'm surprised he only has 92 speed with a 438, but looks like a decent player for sure. Okay, this guy looks pretty good. We're gonna go Greg May. He's only 22 years old, left-handed, just like me for real, out of Iowa State. Ran a 492 at the combine, which was second for defensive tackles and a 4.85 at his pro day, so that's really good. 39 reps on the bench, which was first for defensive tackles. Has A play rec, B power moves, B, B tackle, only A awareness, which is weird with the A, uh, no, I said that wrong. Only C awareness, which is weird with the A play rec. That is what I meant. So I don't know, this guy looks like a really weird player. He's probably gonna have normal dev, to be honest, but let's take him. I called it, I hate my life. All right, this is another weird player. So if you didn't know already, I have an obsession with taking centers, apparently. If you've seen one of my videos before, you'll know that. Just cause it seems like you can always find a good one there. And this guy looks like maybe an exception, but I'm not sure, he's only 21. Not very strong or fast, unfortunately, with only a 51240 and a 25 for reps on the good old bench. But for only 25 reps on the bench, he has A run block power, A run block, but also he only has D awareness. Typically, if there is a good player, they will have good awareness, but I this is just a weird player. He had a bad combine, he has bad awareness, but his stats look ridiculously good, which is so weird, but let's just take him. And he is normal. This was an unfortunate draft. <laughs> this wasn't my best.
I talked all of this shit about the Vikings having one of the worst drafts, and then I go out here and do this. Isn't that fun? Matt Whitworth, however, is better than I thought he would be. At a 76 overall, he's a genuinely solid corner. He's fast, he's good catching, good man, not the worst in run defense, just bad in zone coverage, he looks like a good player. Greg May, if you switch the first and last letters of his name, or the first letters of his first and last name, you have M. Gay, which is Matt Gay, which is, I thought it was Matt Gay right there, that's why I'm pointing that out. But yeah, Greg May is only 72 overall, I don't know what I'm talking about, 92 strength is very good, and he's fast with 74 speed, 81 excel, I mean not that that's fast, but when you're 6'3", 300 pounds, that's pretty fast. 73 power move, 73 block shed, 76 play rack, 77 tackle, he looks like an okay player, I don't know what I'm gonna do with him though. Matt Murray is dog shit, I thought he was gonna be a good player, but no, he's terrible with like finesse and just pass blocking in general. See, this is what I'm saying, bro. If a player doesn't have good awareness, they're probably not gonna be good. There are exceptions, like I guess technically Matt Whitworth is, but still, if you're looking later, probably don't do it. They did take a tight end, Luke Sloan, who looks pretty good, I guess, at a 68 overall, almost nice. And then the CPU drafted worse than I did with the last two picks. So that was something. Real quick, I'm gonna do what I call a pro gamer move. We're gonna release Kirk Cousins, but don't worry, don't piss your pants and shit and cum and all that stuff. I'm gonna re-sign him for only 13, 14 million, I guess. The reason I'm doing that is because it saved us 35 million to cut him. Uh, that's kind of a no-brainer to me, especially considering he was on the last year of his deal. It's basically our way of them taking a pay cut. Uh, in this case, a massive pay cut. But here's a look at the team going into year number two of the rebuild. It's completely the same, honestly. I might even still start Wyatt Davis like I did last year over Matt Murray. I did move him outside to guard because of his build and him being a powerful player. It just made sense at 6'3", 320. And then here's a look at the defense. Lewis Seen is gonna start once again. I did pick up Charvarius Ward just because he was just chilling in free agency. And same with Caleb on Chase on. It makes sense that he was cut, not so much Charvarius Ward, but it definitely makes sense that Caleb Von Chase on was cut, so. Oh yeah, I also picked up Brian Edwards, but he's not really gonna get much playing time at all either, so eh. But let's see how this team can perform. And I will see you guys for the mid-season point of year number two. I think it may be time for a good old Kellen Mond moment. Oh yeah, it's time. Cause here we are two in fucking four at the mid-season point. Kirk Cousins has thrown four touchdowns through six games with four interceptions. Yeah, he is gone. Dalvin Cook is playing terribly, only 3.7 yards per carry. I have a feeling our own line might not be doing well. Yeah, no, uh, Christian Derisaw has eight sacks through six games. That would put him on pace for at least 20, maybe a bit more. Our whole line is playing absolutely terribly. Our defense is not doing anything at all. I believe it is time for a good old Kellen Mond moment. So we have some upgrades here, hopefully for some important players. Actually, yeah, three starters. So Matt Whitworth will go into slot. Again, I know I say this in like every video, but just a tip, not just the tip, but just a tip. Always use slot for corners if you want to go into man coverage, because like you saw there, it upgraded man by two. But we'll just auto spend those. So I don't know what to do with this team. Uh, we have a pretty decent team at an 82 overall, but we're just not performing. We have some re-signings here. We're gonna see Kirk Cousins in here and I'm not gonna do it. We have Dalvin Tomlinson, which by the way, I didn't point this out, but I believe I saw a stat that said there have been two players in the NFL named Dalvin out of the history of the NFL, and the Vikings currently have both of them in Dalvin Cook and Dalvin Tomlinson, which is so bizarre. But either way, let's re-sign Dalvin Tomlinson to keep that uh, record alive. So we'll bring him back. Irv Smith, we're definitely gonna re-sign, even though he hasn't been stellar here. I'll re-sign him. He's only like five mil a year, so definitely. Garrett Bradbury, absolutely not. Alexander Madison, we'll bring back as our running back too, I guess. He's not very expensive at all. Armin Watts, I guess I'll bring back, I guess, just to be, okay, well, fuck you too then. And yeah, Kirk Cousins is in here. We're not bringing him back and definitely not. And we do have some depth pieces in here. So I'll figure that out at the end of the year, but hopefully we can finish strong here with Kelland Mont, Ke Kelland? 
Kellen Mond as our quarterback. Okay, uh, apparently Kellen Mond was not the uh, solution to our problems as we finish 5-12. and 12. Uh, That's not very poggers, I guess. You know, actually, he wasn't bad. He had 24, almost 2,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, only 4 interceptions. What is my game doing? I don't know why it just tabbed me out there. Sorry, the screen went black. Only had a 58% completion percentage, but he didn't do bad at all. He didn't develop much either. He only went up two overall from starting like a f half of a season at quarterback. That's weird. Only 1,100 yards and 17 touchdowns from Dalvin Cook. Uh, well, 17 touchdowns is a lot, but the only is the four yards per carry. Only four yards per carry. That's not great. KJ Osborne had 1,000 yards with only three touchdowns. Justin Jefferson, under 1,000 yards with six touchdowns. Not a very good receiving group. Uh, the blocking though. Oh my god. How many combined sacks is that? Hold on. What's 30 plus 23? Is that 54? Did we have 54 sacks? Well, what are like real life sack numbers? Okay, so in real life this year, Joe Burrow was sacked 54, t or 51 times, sorry. We got sacked, or our quarterbacks got sacked a total of 54 times. Yikes. Also, Zach Wilson only played in 13 games, but got sacked 44 times. So I guess he probably got sacked the most out of, or on a like per game basis. Poor Zach Wilson, he's gonna he's gonna be a bust. He's playing on the Jets. He's not gonna work out, I don't think. Even though he does like MILFs, which, you know, based, but still. But yeah, terrible offensive line. In terms of defense, Brian Asamoah led the team in tackles once again with 142. Daniil Hunter and Dalvin Tomlinson each led the team in tackles for loss with 16. Daniil Hunter led the team with only seven and a half sacks. Zadaria Smith with six and a half again. Everything was just down this year, I guess except interceptions, those were up, but eh, interceptions are a fluky stat anyways. It is nice to get them, but they're fluky. We had the worst offense in the NFL and the 26th defense. I think it might be time for a good old fashioned uh, playbook change. I was rolling with the, I think it was Colts offense for some reason, or I don't know what I went with, but yeah. Josh Allen wins MVP here after they had the number one overall pick. Okay. Tom Brady on the Saints here. That's weird. No Vikings. Zeke wins Offensive Player of the Year for the NFC. No Vikings, not surprising. Defensive Player of the Year goes to another Cowboy, even though they were 5-12. and 12. So it looks like this is just the complete op opposite of last year for some reason. But yeah, Demarcus Lawrence wins Defensive Player of the Year. Dorian O'Daniel on the Vikings is at number four. Okay. No Vikings up there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Roosevelt Young of the Bears. Okay. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Kelvin Charles of the Packers. Matt, Matt Whitworth comes in at number three. I'm a little disappointed he didn't win it, but to be honest, I don't really know what he did this year. Let me, hold on, let me see. Okay, so 70 tackles, three tackles for loss, three interceptions, only three pass deflections. I think three was his number, definitely. 38 catches allowed. Not the best season, but he got interceptions, so I guess that's cool. Another really bizarre Super Bowl. The Pittsburgh Steelers take down the Carolina Panthers 45 to 42. These have been close Super Bowls and they've been super interesting. These I wouldn't mind if these Super Bowls happened in real life. These would be cool. Especially this one with it being that high scoring and two new quarterbacks in Baker Mayfield and Kenny Pickett battling it out. That would be pretty fucking cool, not gonna lie. I wouldn't complain. All right, so here we're gonna re-sign Armin Watts just to be a depth player. We're gonna replace him more than likely, but I do want him back just to be on the team. Josh Metellus, depth piece. Charvarius Ward and Brian Edwards were probably gonna let go. Kirk were definitely letting go. Caleb Von Chase on, I don't know how he played, but to be a third pass rusher at a 72 overall, that's not bad. I might play Ali Udo this year because I know he does well in sim a lot of the- okay, fuck you too. All right, so in free agency, we have 69 million, so that's pretty pretty nice and i'm i'm looking at i'm looking at somebody right here i'm looking somebody right in the eyes his uh family hating eyes aaron Rodgers. uh i got him in the lions rebuild i didn't get him in the bears rebuild i might get him here we'll see so we're gonna have him play for pretty much every division rival or at least relevant division rival uh the bears aren't really a good team 
or even a team at this point. I don't know, we'll see. Adam Thielen is down to a 78 overall. Miko Hardman, how we feeling, buddy? How, how's it going, man? Wanna join the squad, buddy? I hope so. Good lord, I hope so. A problem with my rosters that I'm trying to fix currently is there are never any big or different players in free agency. I mean, if there is a big player, it's always either Aaron Rodgers, Kareem Hunt, like, not super, well, I guess, obviously, Aaron Rodgers is, but by this point, he's regressed. Kareem Hunt is a very good running back, but it's a running back, and I wouldn't call him the absolute best running back in the world. He is, like, top 10, though. I just wish there were better players here, because I definitely want a very good corner. I want a better safety. I want maybe even a better linebacker and a D-lineman, but none of those, there isn't any of that here, so... That's definitely something I need to figure out a way to make happen in my rosters, which is what I'm working on now. But I just completely ignored who I'm going after here. I'm fucking slow. We're gonna be going after Miko Hardman. We're offering him four years, 54 million. He is a superstar at only 25 years old. Do I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. God, that's so lame. I don't know if I wanna do it. It's so lame. You know what? We're gonna offer him, like, if he isn't signed by, like, week three, I'll offer him a contract. But I don't know. It feels so lame to do that. Okay, it, we do get Miko Hardman. Let's go to week three. Let's see. If he isn't signed, I guess I'll offer him a contract. He isn't signed. Uh... Okay, I'll do it. Fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. I feel so cheap. We have fifth year. Is this going to be like Justin Jefferson, maybe? Yeah, it is, obviously. I didn't really talk much about him. I think he's like a top five receiver. I see people calling him like top three now, which I guess is just the case for a lot of people. A lot of people just overrate a lot of receivers for some reason. Like I see people call him top three. I've seen people call Jamar Chase top three. I've seen people call Debo top three. Like, dude, not everyone can be top three. I think the top three right now is some mix of like, Devontae Adams, obviously number one, Cooper Cup, Tyree Kill, or D-Hop. One of those three, they're all like interchangeable for two and three, whoever you want to put there. I think Cup is like two, maybe. It just, it depends. I'm not gonna go on a full rant about like people forgetting about players after injury like a D Hop, but it's so fucking stupid. I'm a Seahawks fan. D Hop, is, D, DeAndre Hopkins is like top two when healthy. And still, while not healthy, I still think he's like the second best receiver in the end. I, I don't know, dude. Whatever. Fight me. I could rant about this for fucking hours. <laughs> I don't know why it pisses me off so bad. Did my game fucking crash? I've been sitting here waiting for it to load for a solid two minutes. Hurry up, bitch. All right, so here in the draft, the Texans have the number one overall pick. It seems like they're just perpetually terrible in this game, which I guess makes sense. I feel like they're on the right track in real life. I don't know if I would have fired their head coach last year. I think he was actually pretty decent, but you know, they're on the right track. But anyways, we have the number three overall pick as the Cardinals take Josh Jimenez, a defensive lineman that I think I was kind of looking at. Okay, so we are, our focus position was tackle. Unfortunately, none of them are good, which is kind of a problem, but that was our focus position. And it doesn't look like adding these players as a favorite did work. I might try it the other way around, put them as a favorite and then make them a fo- That's probably what it's supposed to be. I just did it the wrong way. Oh, this guy's a top five player. He doesn't look good. He's fast and strong, but he's not good at pass blocking and he's not great at run blocking either. He's just okay. It's not a top five pick I'm gonna make, that's for sure. Yeah, and it didn't scout Damian Watford either. However, he looks insane. This guy looks really good. Unfortunately, this is gonna be a player that has normal dev, but either way, he looks very good. With A block shed, A tackle, not really any speed or strength, not great at least. B aware, I don't know if I want him. He'll be like a 78, but he'll have normal. Okay, fuck it. We're gonna go Damian Watford. I'm calling it now 78 overall, normal dev. Now that I'm calling it, he's gonna have hidden, but I'm calling the normal. Let's take him. And he has hidden. Fuck my life. But I mean, I guess that's a good thing because he has normal, but also I called it wrong. Either way, I meant I meant to say he has hidden, but either way, he looks like a very good player. 84 strength, 77 speed isn't the best, but at 6'4", 305, the 77 speed is pretty good. The strength still isn't good, but he looks like a very good player. Very good. Ooh, okay, this guy is still here. 
Everett Irons, fucking amazing offensive lineman name. Not the strongest in the world considering his name is Irons with only 31 reps on the bench, which is still good, but typically for linemen you want to shoot for about 35-ish or in that range in this game. But he has A impact block, A lead block, I unfortunately don't know literally any of his pass or run blocking stats other than the B run block. So he looks like he should be a good player. I really have no clue, but let's take him. And he does have hidden. Okay, cool. Not the strongest with only 84 strength. Not really strong at all. Uh, I think he should have higher strength with 31 reps, but he looks like a good player for sure. This draft is definitely going better than the last one for sure. Okay, I'm going to do my thing. This center looks insane ronard ronard ronald richards that's kind of a hard one to say ronald richards he's 6'4 291 only 21 years old out of iowa state so he's a smaller center well a tall one but a skinny one so that's interesting he ran a 493 at the combine a 483 at his pro or a 486 at it at his pro day. I just really can't speak right now. Put up 36 reps on the bench, so he's fast and he's strong. 31 inch vertical jump, which was first for centers. He was basically first or second for everything at the combine, which is crazy. And he has a pass block, a pass block finesse. Not a great run blocker, but a very good pass blocker. This dude's even a candidate for like tackle, considering ours have been, ta nah, I probably won't do that. But I do have a plan for our tackles, just a bit of a hint. But Ronald Richard, Ronald Richards, I almost said it right, but I stopped myself for some reason. He has hidden development, let's go. 74 speed, 80 excel, 88 strength is a crazy combination of stats. I'm just gonna take another flyer on another player with the last name Irons, Alfonso Irons. He's 6'2", 233, 22 years old out of Montana, so he's a smaller linebacker. He ran a 4-5-1 at the combine, a 4-4-5 at his pro day. He isn't strong with only 17 reps, but he was first for all the like athletic categories like broad jump, three cone, 20 yards, so I expect him to just be a really fast linebacker. I don't really know any of his run defense stuff. Well, I guess I know hit power and impact block. I know play rec is a B, which is good. So let's take him and he has hidden, let's go. This guy is potentially a really good player. I wanted another linebacker because we have Eric Kendricks who is regressing. We have Brian Asamoah who is good here. I think he's overrated in real life as a prospect, but he's turning into a good player here. He's not quite the best yet, but he's performed pretty well. Alfonso Irons will be, at the very least, a very good third linebacker. Okay, maybe the hype was not warranted. Uh, <laughs> these are a lot lower of overalls than I thought they were gonna be. Was this just a shitty draft class? Because they had, like, A's for a ton of stuff. Ooh, yeah, it looks like it was. Oh, it was a terrible draft class. There were only three players at a 77 or higher. 278s, a 77, 276s, and then everyone else was a 75 or lower. Okay, I guess I'm not too mad about it because nobody in this class really got any good players, but dude, this that kind of sucks. Damian Watford is only a 74 overall. 78 power moves, decent speed and strength. Not, he's just kind of a well-balanced -bal player. Even with his pass rush, he's not too much worse as a finesse, as a speed rusher compared to a power rusher. Just a really balanced player. Everett Irons is only a 73. That's about what I thought he would be, to be fair. His pass block, or his run block was questionable, but it looks like he's not even much better as a pass blocker than a run blocker, so I really don't know what to think about him. Ronald Richards is very disappointing. I thought he was gonna be like a 76 or something, but he's only a 71. Does have good strength. I don't know how he's only a 71. I mean, I don't think he has a blocking stat lower than 71 other than run block finesse. That's really bizarre. How is he only a 71? I, I don't know, but he looks like a really good player. And then the CPU drafted some players for us. Or no, actually, I did take one more player. Alfonso Irons is only a 66 overall. Yikes. Not good in coverage. He is fast. He, we basically drafted, wait, that's weird. We basically drafted Brian Asamoah right here. I mean, he doesn't, he's not as smart of a player as Brian Asamoah, but he's fast. He's a smaller linebacker. That's interesting. <laughs> 
The CPU drafted Tremaine Williamson looks like a good defensive lineman and he is a scheme fit so that he looks like a worse version of the other defensive linemen we took. Will Harding even looks like a good running back. He's a super fast running back and not very elusive with only 88 agility, but fast running back, I guess. And it drafted a QB for some reason. Yeah, that's definitely what we need after signing Aaron Rodgers, uh-huh. If we do not make the playoffs this year, I will do a fourth year and even if we do make the playoffs and don't do very well, I still might do a fourth year. We'll have to see. I've never really done a fourth year in my rebuilds before, but now that I'm kind of changing up my editing style and doing a little bit quicker of editing, I might, I might go for it. I might go for fourth years now, just because it leaves me more time now that I do them quicker. But regardless, this is a look at the team going into year number three, maybe the final year of the rebuild. This offensive line is completely different other than left guard. So we drafted Ronald Richards, disappointing in terms of, of overall, but he is only 21. He has hidden dev and he looks like a really good pass blocker and he's an athletic freak. So you gotta love that. And Everett Irons only 22 years old. And despite being 330 pounds, he's a very agile, quick lineman. So not not the fastest, but he is a quick lineman, I guess I would say. So they're good. And we switched our tackles around. Brian O'Neill is going to be playing left tackle. I didn't realize he was 6'7", Jesus. I mean, I knew he was tall from watching him, but still. And Christian Derisaw is going to be playing right tackle. I feel more comfortable with Brian O'Neill at the left tackle position because Christian Derisaw let up fucking 19 sacks last year. That's not ideal. I wouldn't do this in real life because switching positions linemen, or linemen's position a lot of the time fucks with them. Apparently it's kind of like trying to write with your left hand when you're right handed, which makes sense because I mean you're blocking, if you're a right guard you're blocking primarily with your right hand because they're coming at you from the right side. If you move over to the left side, you're doing it the first contact would be with your left side and you're kind of doing it from the left, which that makes perfect sense to me. I get it 100%. Anyways, weird ramble over. This defense is looking very good. Obviously, the addition of Damian Watford is pretty huge at a 75 overall now. He had a little breakout thing where it gives him plus three to each power and finesse moves, which is very nice. The corners are looking much better. I want Andrew Booth to be my number one because he has superstar. But yeah, this is a very good looking team. Hopefully we can perform. Okay, let's go. At the mid-season point of year number three, we are five and one. That's what you love to see. So it looks like quarterback at least was a big part of the problem. That's no surprise to me, but still Still, but Alfonso Irons has an upgrade here. I am kind of playing him as our sub linebacker, at least in rotation with Eric Kendricks and um, Brian Asamoa. But let's see how Aaron Rodgers is doing. So he's doing almost identical to what Kirk Cousins was doing at the midseason of year one with 1500 yards, 11 touchdowns, two interceptions. That's not ideal considering it's Aaron Rodgers. It seems like this offense is just kind of dog shit. What, what playbook did I go with? Because I definitely won't use it again. It sucks dick. It is the Cowboys offense. Do not use the Dallas Cowboys offense. They do well in this game, but apparently their offensive playbook isn't good. Didn't I already use these? Up I guess I didn't spend the- I don't fucking know, dude. But for re-signings, I am actually gonna do these. I saw these earlier. It's gross. It's literally like our whole team. So let's start from the top. Daniil Hunter, let's see if he takes a four-year 82, and of course he does not. Fuck you too. Aaron Rodgers, I might wait and then sign him in free agency, because that'll be cheaper. Zadarius Smith, three or 20, he's not really worth that to me. Eric Kendricks, if I do re-sign him, I'll wait until free agency. Ezra Cleveland, how are you playing this year? Three sacks, last year you let up 11 fucking sacks, so I'll, I'll do it. He's gonna play worse. Okay, well shit, he rejects us too. Why is everyone rejecting us in this rebuild, bro? I feel like me in real life with women. And then I guess we'll re-sign the rest of these players later. So here in the playoffs, we do make it at 11 and six. So let's see how the team did this year. Aaron Rodgers had 36 touchdowns, 13 interceptions is quite a few, 4,300 yards. Definitely a solid year, not his best, but definitely solid. 
1,700 rushing yards for Dalvin Cook with 5.7 yards per carry, 16 touchdowns, and even 11 touchdowns for Alexander Madison. We had so many rushing touchdowns, even had two for Aaron Rodgers. CJ Ham ran the ball three times for one yard, two of those being touchdowns, interesting. Justin Jefferson had 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. KJ Osborne with 1,069 yards, nice. As well as six touchdowns. Michael Hardman, 900 yards, eight touchdowns. Irv Smith had an, uh, another okay year. The blocking was much better. It looks like switching the tackles around was the move. Playing Brian O'Neill at left, Christian Darisaw at right. The interior was amazing. Just a great group. Tackles are down this year, which is a good thing because it means our defense was on the field less. Brian Asamoah led the team with 116 tackles. Harrison Phillips had 20 tackles for loss. Daniil Hunter led the team in sacks with 12. Zadarius Smith had 9.5. Damian Watford, the rookie, had 8.5. What's his overall and what's his dev trait? Okay, he's up to a 79, 80 with morale. Only a star dev, but still a good player. In terms of interceptions, Harrison Smith had four, Cam Dantzler had three, Eric Kendricks and Matt Whitworth had two, and a number of players had one. So very, very good year, a huge step up. Wow, okay, Teddy Bridgewater was second for MVP. Patrick Mahomes does win it, thank God. Well, actually, it would have been fun if Teddy Bridgewater won it, so I wish he did. <laughs> no Vikings up there. Really? No Rodgers? Okay. Offensive player of the year does go to Teddy Bridgewater. Dalvin Cook at six, Aaron Rodgers at eight. Former, or I guess new Packers quarterback, Jordan Love, comes in at number nine. Micah Parsons wins defensive player of the year at a 99 overall now. Interesting. No Vikings, surprisingly. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Will Franklin of the Falcons. No Vikings. Defensive rookie of the year? No, what? Channing McLean of the Cardinals. Damian Watford with eight and a half sacks, only number two. I need to check out that year. Did it say it was a Cardinals player? I think it did. Okay, Channing McLean. 71 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, nine sacks, a pass deflection, and no fumble, f forced fumbles or fumble recoveries. How about our player? So Damian Watford, 48 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks, a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. Okay, that's definitely fair that the other guy won it, but I'm just, I'm disappointed, man. Maybe I wish our offense didn't do as well as it did because it would have given him an opportunity to play more. But we had the first defense in the NFL we had the best defense with 5,400 yards allowed. That's amazing. But here we are taking on the New Orleans Saints at 10 and 7. We have a one last hurrah scenario. Who's this going to be for? Maybe Adam Thielen? Oh, Harrison Smith. Ooh, uh-oh. Also, Aaron Rodgers is wearing number four. That is cursed. Okay, so we get 10 plus morale or whatever that was. I don't know what it said. I went too fast. We have first of many, whatever the hell this does. I think it's... Oh, I went guarantee win. Ooh. I don't know if I should have done that. That gives him plus five break tackle and hit power. Uh-oh. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I fucked up. I didn't mean to click it. But we have a lot of upgrades here. Dalvin Tomlinson, Irv Smith are the most notable there. Pretty good upgrades, I guess. But also I realized Aaron Rodgers is kind of doing what Brett Favre did. We'll see if he goes to the Jets after this. Or did he go to the Jets before the Viking? Good old Brett Favre, but for some reason it's pronounced Favre. Okay, no, well, he played for the Jets before the Vikings. I would have been like five years old. I don't blame myself for not knowing that. Uh, but still, at least I knew what two teams he played for other than the, Vi well, and the Falcons, but still. Either way though, super quick before we get into this game, if you have made it all the way here and for some reason you haven't subscribed, I'm saying this because this might be the last uh, game we play unless I can do another year. Be sure to drop a sub, a like, and turn on notifications for my channel, as well as let me know down below what team I should rebuild next. All that should take you like 30 seconds or less. It shouldn't be some hard thing to do. And it, at least for me, is very much worth it. And if you like my content, you know, it'll be worth it for you. But let's just sim this game out. Hopefully we can take down the Saints. And we do, 25 to 17. So that's actually huge. We get the one last hurrah another boost for Harrison Smith. Okay, so what do we get? We get another 10 morale. That's amazing. I kind of want to see the overalls real quick and another first of many. What do we get for this? Oh, just, oh, it's just staff points. Eh. Who cares, bruh? Here we are taking on the Dallas Cowboys. They are literally like the exact same team as us, just they have more wins. They're an 87 overall to our 87 overall. They have 
No, they're an 85 overall to our 85 overall. They have an 87 offense to our 87 offense, and an 83 defense to our 83 defense. I wish I knew how to read. But let's sim this game out against Dallas. And we win! 40 to 38. And here we are taking on the 8 and 9 San Francisco 40 Winers. But we can't sleep on them being 8 and 9. They are ever so slightly better than us. They're the same overall, same overall for defense, but they have one point higher in offense, so they are ever so slightly better than us. We still have the one last hurrah. So that's gonna give us another plus 10 morale. That seems kind of busted to me, to be honest. Like, that seems really broken. Cause it's literally just handing plus threes out to like plus five to Irv Smith. Like it's handing out massive overall boosts just because one player is thinking about retiring. Like that seems kind of unfair to me. Plus five to Eric Kendricks. It makes Daniil Hunter a 97. Like, I get if someone's gonna retire, the players are gonna play more motivated, but like, this is insane. And we do actually bring Dalvin Cook into the 99 club, which is pretty cool. As well as Justin Jefferson, which he was already in, apparently before, a little bit before this, so that's cool, we don't have to upgrade him into it. And we actually do have quite a few upgrades for some starting offensive linemen, so let's use those. And let's see, with all our morale, if we can take down San Francisco. And we do not, oh god, no. Losing only 31 to 28, only by three points, that really sucks. Fuck it, man. Let's do one last year real quick, we gotta. And the 49ers can't even put up more than 10 points. Bro, we would have fucking smoked the Steelers. They only put up 14 on that sorry ass defense. We would have fucking destroyed them, that sucks, man. A 14 to 10 Super Bowl, but apparently the Steelers are very good here. I think they won the last Super Bowl even, so that's back to back for them. That's kind of wild. But for this last year, I think I'm gonna change the playbook once again. We're not gonna re-sign Aaron Rodgers here, but I will in free agency. Daniil Hunter, I definitely do want back. What did he say he wanted? The length is good, but that's it. That's definitely not what women tell me. But let's bring him back. Some of these older players will just bring back in free agency. Ezra Cleveland, what did he want? Just everything, okay. So we'll bring him back, cool. CJ Ham, just because, just for fun, we'll bring him back. Cam Dantzler, this is actually a scary one. I really hope he accepts this. I'm actually gonna up it, just to guarantee it. Okay, good. Harrison Phillips, he hasn't necessarily been great, but I do want him back. Hell, even if KJ Osborne wants to resign, we'll bring him back, cool. Even DJ Wanham, let's just bring the whole team back and run it back again this year. All right, I know I said I'm gonna bring the whole team back, but I'm actually gonna make a couple cuts here. We're gonna be letting go of Adam Thielen. He's only a 76 overall now due to regression, and it would save us 14 million to do that, so I'm definitely gonna do that. And Harrison Smith, I'm gonna resign him because we have absolutely nothing at safety. Ooh, he's only an 80 overall. I thought he would be like an 82 with a little bit of morale boost up to an 83, but he's only an 80. I'll still resign him, but I don't feel great about that. <laughs> I wish we could get a better player there, but eh. He's still good. He's still okay. And it looks like this is uh, a decent free agency class for sure. Here in free agency, we're doing some really interesting stuff. So Aaron Rodgers, obviously we're gonna try and bring him back. We're only offering him one year 17 million so far, but he doesn't really get any offers here anyways. So I think we'll be able to do that. Tyler Boyd, we're offering four years, 54 million. We don't have the lead by much, so honestly, I don't... Here, actually, I'm gonna up that so we can get him, because I don't think we're gonna get that where we are right now, or get him where we are right now. So we'll offer him four years, 60, which kind of seems like an overpay for him, but at this point in the NFL, not really. Even in real life, not really. Harrison Smith, we're gonna try to re-sign five years, or, whoa, five years, no, one year, 5.85 mil, and Kenneth Murray, he is being offered five years, unlike Harrison Smith, for 53 mil, so we'll see if those players sign with us. If not, fuck me, I guess, because we kind of need some of those players. <laughs> okay, so we do get Kenneth Murray, we do get Harrison Smith, and we do get Tyler Boyd. However, we don't get Aaron Rodgers yet. We're still in the lead for him, obviously nobody else is going for him, but 
I uh, hope he wants to sign for this and just doesn't outright not sign with anyone. We'll see. Okay, he still hasn't accepted. Ah, uh, that's kind of concerning. We're gonna up the offer a little bit to one year 20.2. That's all the money I have right now. And apparently my game crashed here again. I want to die. Yikes. Okay, Aaron Rodgers doesn't accept. Um, I think that's okay though, because I think he'll just be sitting in free agency at the beginning of next year, so I can just kind of pick him up. Tristan Wirfs signs with the Patriots. That's super interesting. Justin Tucker to the Lions. Kenny Moore to the Texans. They do love their slot corners, so I could see that. They love having literally like seven slot corners on their team, so I could see it. Patrick Ricard to the Falcons. Michael Pierce to the Broncos, Michael Gallup and Grady Jarrett to the Jags, Bobby Wagner to the Texans. This is a super interesting free agency class. I kind of like it. So here in the draft, the Texans once again have the number one overall pick. Now we unfortunately only have the number 30 pick, obviously, because we were in the championship game, the NFC championship but let's see what I'm gonna do here. Wow, this may be the worst first round player I've ever seen. So he's a 5'11", 196 safety, already 23 years old, ran a 4'7", at the combine, a 4'7". That's like, there are defensive tackles in this game that run almost that fast. In real life too, I mean, some get close. Bench press, 21 reps, that was good. The B pursuit is fine, but D man coverage. F stamina, not that that really matters. F kick return again, not that that really matters, but still not good. There's like nothing redeeming about this guy other than the fact that he's strong. And even then, it's not like he's big. He's 5'11", 196. That's like free safety size. Well, I guess this guy's a free safety, but he's a 4'7" free safe with D man not ideal and Zay Hobbs is almost identical except he's actually big and slow there is genuinely like nobody good here at the positions I'm looking at but this is at least an intriguing player Javon Watson is 6'2 205 22 years old out of Tennessee he is a strong safety Ran a 4.56 at the combine, which is okay, I guess. The 4.28 20 yard shuttle's good. Bench press 16, it's okay. I just like the A pursuit, because pursuit is a pretty important safety stat. The C zone is concerning, because that's another important safety stat, but this guy looks like a good strong safety, so let's take him. Normal dev. I'm not all that disappointed, because nobody here even looked good. It'll probably be like a 69 overall or something. It's basically like the Vikings drafting Lewis seen at the end of the first this year. Actually, weirdly similar. And then I think we're gonna go Joe Rainey. He's 6'2", 225, 21 years old out of Oregon State. We're in a 4'6", 22 reps on the bench. Weirdly similar to the last player we took, but this guy has a really good vertical jump, broad jump, three cone, and 20 yard shuttle with first, second, first, and first. He has B awareness, A pursuit. Like I said, this guy is weirdly similar to that safety, but let's take him. Normal dev, god damn it, dude. I thought for sure this guy would have hidden, but looks like he does not. Let's just sim the rest of this draft out. I think the CPU will pick better than me. So I was wrong. Uh, they most certainly did not do better than me. They got Will Rich, a 64 overall defensive tackle in the third round. Yikes. In the fourth round, they got LaMarcus DeVoe, a 67 overall corner. Yikes. And they got literally nothing else, like even worse players than those two. So the two highlights were definitely Javon Watson. Looks like an okay player, good run defender, I guess, but he doesn't even have that good of tackle. And Joe Rainey, a fast pass rusher slash linebacker. I don't know why he's listed as a speed rusher with 63 finesse moves, but I think I'm gonna force him to play that because we kind of need another pass rusher, so we'll try him there. No matter what, this is going to be the final year, but here is a look at this amazing team going into the third and final year. The star players of the offense. I meant fourth and final, but you know what I mean. Justin Jefferson at only 25 years old is a 99 overall. 98 short route, 99 medium route, 99 deep route. Holy shit, that guy is insane. Dalvin Cook, also a 99 overall. His stats aren't as impressive, but he is still a very good player. Best running back in the NFL, if you didn't see that. Number one, halfback. Aaron Rodgers, obviously 
Darius Lee, even though he isn't a 90 overall or above, he still plays very well. And on the defense here, <clears throat> we have at least a superstar player in Daniil Hunter. Obviously, we no longer have Zadarius Smith. DJ Wanham is going to take his place. And I did find this guy in free agency, Michael Northrup. He could develop a little bit. We'll see. But the team in general looks very good. We do have some weaker positions that just wouldn't develop. But I'm happy with this team. We have to go out and perform, though. So let's get it done. Let's go, dude. We are 6-1 and one at the midseason point. Unfortunately, taking our first loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars in week seven. That kind of sucks. That's not a great team to lose to. But we have some upgrades here. Actually, some pretty important play- three really important players. We'll go into slot for Andrew Booth, who is up to an 85 with morale, and that is a lot of boosts. See, that's why you use the slot upgrade. It is absolutely broken. Oh, I realized this guy's name is Jorvante Willie, or Jorvante Wilson. That is a cursed name. Jorvante. Huh. It sounds almost Italian. That is weird. I don't like it. We tried our absolute fucking hardest to miss the playoffs, but we still make them at 10 and 7. So if you think about it, before the Jaguars loss, we were 6 and 0. Oh. We finished the season 4 and 7 after that game. Or I guess technically, no, I guess after that game. I don't know, my brain hurts. I didn't mean to click X Factor database. Dude, I'm gonna fucking cry. I don't care. So Aaron Rodgers wasn't that good. I mean, 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 picks. That's okay. That's like a Kirk Cousins in real life stat line. It's okay. Well, I mean, it's good, but I expect Aaron Rodgers to do better even though he is 40, but still. <laughs> 1,600 yards, 5.4 yards per carry, and 22 touchdowns for Dalvin Cook. 10 touchdowns and 500 yards from Alexander Madison. Receiving was insane. Three players with 1,000 yards in Justin Jefferson, Tyler Boyd, and Mikko Hardman. Irv Smith with less than 500 yards. In terms of blocking, wasn't great. Christian Derrissaw is a right tackle, let up fucking 13 sacks, that is gross. And Ezra Cleveland, as a left guard, let up more sacks than a left tackle. Yikes. However, Everett Irons let up zero sacks. I need to make a list of every player that has let up zero sacks in my rebuilds. I think I'm gonna start that list now. They're gonna be called the, I don't know, I'll come up with a good name for him. I'm gonna add him to the list though. So Everett, Everett Irons, you're on the list now. Okay, I see a crazy stat, hold on. Okay, Kenneth Murray had 137 tackles, that is amazing, it led the team. Harrison Phillips had 13 tackles for loss. Daniil Hunter had 18 and a half sacks. Jesus Christ, dude. Wait, he had a 99? What was that? Probably like finesse moves? Yeah, it was 99 finesse. Damn, son, he's a good player. Even DJ Wanham had 10 and a half sacks. Maybe we should have been playing him above Zadarius Smith this whole time. Damian Watford also did very, he has 90 power moves, damn. He did very well with nine and a half sacks. Our, in, our interior players got a little bit of pressure with three and a half from each Harrison Phillips and Dalvin Tomlinson. I guess Watford's an interior player too, but more of a pass rusher than a run defender. I didn't check interceptions, hold on. I'm never that interested in interceptions just cause they're inconsistent, but yeah, only three from, well, Javon, Javon Watson as a backup rookie had three interceptions. That's crazy. Matt Whitworth had two and a lot of players, well, not that many players had one. So it looks like interceptions weren't our thing. Yearly awards MVP goes to Lamar Jackson, still on the Ravens. Teddy Bridgewater up there again. I might have to get him in a rebuild if I have a team that needs a quarterback because it looks like he does well. Dalvin Cook comes in at number eight for MVP. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Christian McCaffrey. Dalvin Cook at number four, Aaron Rodgers at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Daniil Hunter. Let's go. That's actually the first award I've won in this rebuild. We're getting screwed with these awards. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kerry Carter of the Rams, no Vikings. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Khalid Hatchet of the Lions. Javon Watson does come in at number four. If he started, he probably would have won it, so I kind of wish I started him, but whatever. So we have a hot opponent scenario. Let's just be confident. I don't want to give him any stat boosts for no reason. Well, it's still going to give him plus 10 break tackle, but it's going to give us plus 10 
to all those stat boosts too, so it'll keep it even. I don't think we're gonna win this game, unfortunately. They have a better record in the same overall, but what we have is heart. We have heart, and we have uh, some really good players, that's for sure. <laughs> we're not a very balanced team, but oh boy, we have quite a few very good players. And by quite a few, I mean like three or four. <laughs> but let's see if we can take down Dallas. We're gonna get shit on, I'm telling you that now. Never mind, we won. How did we win that? We win 42 to 38 against the Dallas Cowboys. I guess that's fair, we were the same overall, but still. Okay, so what do we get here? Oh, we keep that. So we get plus ton break tackle, player rec, all that good stuff, and we get XP. So that's actually pretty huge. This is gonna be such a fucking long video. <laughs> so this is actually like insanely broken. Uh, we have like a million upgrades here, but here we are taking on the Carolina Panthers at 12 and 5. We are a better team than them though. 89 offense to their 84, 83 defense to their 83, and 86 overall to their 83 overall, but let's see if we can take them down. And we can, 38 to 28. But here we are taking on the 13 and 4 division rival Green Bay Packers, and there is going to be a playoff blizzard. So it's going to be what? Minus, uh, except acceleration, change of direction, and speed for both teams. At least it's not just for one team. And this in real life would balance out because these are two both cold teams. In fact, I would argue maybe the Vikings even have a bit of an advantage. I think it's ever so slightly colder there, but I don't know. And we have a playoff rivals scenario. I like that. I think we would benefit from chess match. Our defense is really a lot of young players. I think that would be helpful. And we do have even more upgrades just for some depth players. But let's see if we can take down the Green Bay Packers in the conference championship. Let's just go straight to the Super Bowl. And we do. Let me see the score. We're taking on Kansas City in the Super Bowl. So we beat Green Bay by seven points, 35 to 28. We outgained them by quite a bit. It looks like specifically in rushing yards, our run offense was amazing. Matthew Slauson is their quarterback. That's interesting. So it's Matt Slauson, the offensive lineman, but as a quarterback this time, I guess? I don't know. Shout out if you know Matt Slauson. I don't think he's been in the NFL forever. Er, well, since 2018 for the Colts. I thought it's been longer than that. He went to a high school named Sweet Home High School in Oregon. There's a city in Oregon named Sweet Home? Why have I never heard of that? Either way, it looks like Kellen Mond came in and threw a four yard touchdown pass. So we had a Kellen Mond moment in the conference championship to get us in. Wait, why was Matt, why was Kellen Mond in? We weren't destroying them and he got a touchdown to put us ahead, I would guess. So Kellen Mond is truly the savior of the rebuild, getting us to the Super Bowl. What the fuck, dude? That's crazy. Dalvin Cook wasn't amazing. It looks like some of the extra rushing yards came from Aaron Rodgers and Alexander Madison. Aaron Rodgers outrushed Alexander Madison slightly with a touchdown, that's interesting. Either way though, that's an interesting game, I can say that much. So we truly do have a Kellen Mond moment. Thank God. But in the Super Bowl, we are taking on the nine and eight Kansas City Chiefs. We have a better record than them. They do have a better offense by three overall, which makes their overall two higher than ours at an 88 compared to our 86. Daniel Hunter does get an upgrade for winning Defensive Player of the Year, so that is cool. But let's see if we can take down Kansas City in the Super Bowl. No, we lose by two points. You know why that is? You know why that is? Hold on. I have a feeling I know why that is. Did we play Kellen Mond? We didn't play Kellen Mond, see? There is a direct correlation between playoff games one and playoff games Kellen Mond played in. I wish I, I wish I started Kellen Mond for that game. Either way though, let's get one last look at the team while I give an outro for this video. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like, sub, comment down below. I have no idea how the hell you made it this far without doing those things already. Maybe other than the comment, but still do it. But let me know what team to rebuild next and I will shout you out. Turn on notifications so you never miss one of my videos. And let's see if we can hit 30 likes on this video. If we can, I will have another rebuild out on Wednesday. And let's see if we can get to 230 subs by the end of the day today. But this has been 
Seriously my favorite rebuild so far. Every single one of these I do, it feels like I can just feel my channel getting better and better and it growing more and more, so I'm very happy to be doing this. This is what I like doing. This is the joy I have in my life, as sad as that is to say. But thank you all so, so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye. I wonder if there's more out there.